And she cries uncontrollably when she's having sex. Is that bad? It might be. Cindy. Yes. What is this? Hello, Dr. Vista. Hi, Cindy. How old are you? I'm 35. What is this all about? Uh, I, I think that if I knew that, I would not be talking to you for this will be the first time that I've admitted it. Really? Yeah. Okay, so tell me what's going on. I mean, what happened? <clears throat> well, I found that in the last year, I, I started dating someone new after not dating anyone for about three years. Um, it, it, it gets involved, but ultimately what's happening here is after I've had sex and almost during, I guess... Almost the, during. Well, during, if you will, towards the end, I begin to feel completely, completely disgusted. I feel awful. I feel that if I cry, I'll never come back. I mean, I could cry and die. That's how deep it gets. And ultimately, I realize that I'll probably be alone for the rest of my life. At that moment? At, at that moment, and especially afterwards. I'm just disgusted. I don't want to be touched. I don't want to be looked at. I don't want to... When did, and when did this start? This starts generally... No, when did this first start happening? It probably started when I was very young. Um, I, I had a boyfriend at the age of 15 till about 25. And then I had someone else in my life from about 25 uh, up until about three years ago, two years ago. And the first relationship basically ended because I knew that somehow sex wasn't in my imagination, anything that should have been based on literature and movies, and it just, it just, it just never was. The, the thought of having to live with this person for the rest of my life was, it was a joke. It was not the right thing to do. And I so there's a feeling of desperation and tr being trapped, right? Yes. Let me ask you the obvious question. Well, this is tough, okay? So come here. Did you ever have the feeling that you were molested as a child? Well, I was raped when I was 11. But yeah. something else has surfaced through the years. What's that? Um, one, one night when my friend was here, um, I fell asleep on the couch and he was rubbing my feet. And I was dead asleep. I woke up and I was feeling aroused because he was arousing himself with me. Um, no, no physical contact, just touching and feeling. And when I felt that he was completely aroused, I was waking up out of my sleep, and I could feel his head was was perspiring, and he was heavy on my chest. And I woke up screaming, "Daddy!" And that was the first time in my life I ever done that. But I kept saying to him. And he looked at me, shook me, and says, wake up. And I was awake. And that's what I felt. Did you pretend to be asleep? No, I did not pretend to be asleep. Okay. After that, I mean. Did you pretend that you said that while you were sleeping? Yes, I did. I had to. Okay. You had to. Why did you have to? I felt I had to. It didn't make sense to me when I heard myself say it. Well, you had to cover. Yes. And that feeling was exactly like... It was ugly. It was exactly like the ugly feeling you had. I tried to get back into that feeling to, to wonder if this is what have happened to me, but I know that I have, I have no recollection of my childhood. I only recall up until about eight years old. Anything prior to that is that I don't exist. I just don't exist. That has to do with how you had to shut it out. In order to shut out the ugly part, you had to shut out all the rest of your childhood. Well? And at the time during sex, when you're feeling aroused, and you're beginning to lose control to that feeling, you know how it starts? And you find yourself be 
wanting to participate and let go. Yes. And the fear uh, is if you let go, maybe you wanted it to happen. You're afraid to, lo to love it, to be there, to deal with it, because the feeling you have is that if you show positive feelings of a sexual nature, maybe it means that you should feel ashamed for having been involved at an earlier time in your life. No matter what happened to you, even if you were aroused, you were innocent because you were a child. You know, it's funny, I have, I have, uh, I've been involved with a situation with a member of my family who, I've, who I have adopted because of the situation. And I know, I know the feelings behind it. I, I hope that I, I thought I worked with it. I'm at a point now where I don't nearly want to survive any longer. I, I, I'm a great survivor, but I'm not a liver. I'm nearly the, surviving. The time has come to start living because of the feeling of pain that comes up when you start feeling pleasure has to do with the shame you feel, and that shame keeps you from remembering something that happened. And you know what, you know what we need to do now. You need to get involved in the whole process, Cindy, of, of discovering this early thing and getting into some therapeutic understanding of it. And it's time to see a therapist and work on this. I can't even imagine the thought of my father touching me. I just, I can't. <laughs> I, just... I, I understand, but there's a one part of you that's very much in touch with that, and it pulls the most powerful heartstrings that there are to pull. You stay tuned. We're going to give you, we're going to have Arlene give you um, uh, a re reference so you can get some help with this. You're going to get a referral. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay. David Viscott, the feelings that don't make sense, and even though they may sound humorous, they may sound peculiar, um, and you know when I said uh, she cries un uncontrollably, and I said, is that bad? You know, crying uncontrollably during sex can be a joyous thing, and if it's bad, it means it's a symptom of something else. Anything that we don't understand causes us anxiety and makes us laugh, and the parts of our lives that we are confused about, the parts that we don't understand, can make us a cripple, and it's up to us. Once we feel the pain, to resolve it. You stay right tuned. We'll be back. <laughs>